have a very fitting mug for today. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm currently a Space Systems Optimization Engineer and I've just finished studying part three of the Mathematical Tripos at the University of Cambridge. And as I say in all of my videos, that's just a fancy way of saying that I studied a maths master's. So yeah, I am a bit of a maths nerd really. Before studying my master's at Cambridge, I studied maths at the University of Leeds for three years and I just love maths if you can't already tell. So yeah, today's video, I am just going to be talking to you about how I study maths for the last four years, how I have studied maths at university and give you some general tips and advice that I would recommend students do just to make their learning a lot easier. I've learned a lot <laughs> over the last four years and I'm excited to tell you all about the things that I do when studying maths. I've split this video into a few different sections. So if you want to navigate around the video a bit easier, I'm going to put timestamps in the description. The first point that I'm going talk about is point number one and this is what you should do before your lectures even start. So let's say you're at university and you have said okay these are the modules I've enrolled on and then from there get yourself organised. If you're writing your notes on paper then get you know relevant folders for different modules or even like one folder and, and split it up into different sections for the different modules or if you're doing it on an iPad get a folder specific for that module and just get yourself organized so that when it comes to when lectures start you don't have to mess around doing all this uh, you kind of just ready and raring to go something else that i found quite helpful really is before lectures even start look at the reading material that is offered with that course see if you can find those books it's usually a book that they put in the reading material i found it quite helpful on my masters because i was using an ipad i could just download those books if they are available that is uh, and have them in the same folder so that if there was something that I wanted to look at in the middle of term then that resource was there available and I didn't have to worry about going to the library and seeing if someone had already taken it out so yeah even if it's just you know if you are doing handwritten notes see if you can find make a folder on your laptop or, or something similar to find that book or even just get the book from from the library it's always helpful to have extra resources when it comes to starting the course because then if you get to a point where you're struggling you can just check those references and not have to worry about going to the library for example get yourself organized because maths <laughs> maths is, can be quite intense uh, and especially when you kind of start lectures and everything's just very chaotic and there's a lot of reading material and there's lots to do having organized folders helps a lot and same for like example sheets if you have say on my ipad i had uh, the module in a folder then inside there i'd have reading material all the reading material that's recommended then i'd have an example sheet folder then i'd have a le lecture note folder uh, and then have all the relevant resources in there. So yeah, that's something that I'd recommend doing before your lectures even start, before you even start note taking. Just helps you get organised and helps have your head in quite a clear space before lectures start. Now point number two is what we do during lectures. And the most important thing that I'm going to say is make sure that your notes are readable, that when it comes to revising them later, you can read exactly what you've written. And it's not an extra task for you to have to go into the notes that you have and then are confused about what you've written. I think this, this was something that was drilled into us before I started part three in my master's at Cambridge. And it was... The terms are intense, you learn a lot, make sure you have a good set of lecture notes and your own lecture notes that you've written that are clear because it helps a lot when it comes to revising and doing example sheets because you know exactly what, what's going on in the lecture notes. So something that I would recommend doing, and I did this uh, on my master's and it really helped, was if you go to a lecture, say you have a lecture in one day, uh, you go and write the lecture notes, the night before or you know the the time before your next lecture i would review that day's lecture and i would check that i understood everything that was going on in it so it might be a case of you've written something really really fast and you want to make it look neater so you know rewriting it to make it look neater or say there's a specific equation that's been calculated and the lecturer has missed out a couple of steps i would then go in and check that i knew what those steps were and i'd add them into my lecture notes it's just helpful because then when it comes to revising, if you've forgotten that area, then you're like, oh, okay, I've got really clear notes here that I know I've gone back over and I understand all the all the 
points. And it's important to do this because then you don't have this kind of stress of before you get to the next lecture, you're already stressed about not understanding the stuff that happened in the previous lecture. So the most important thing for me was I'd go to, say, a day's worth of lectures. Then once I'd had that day worth of lectures, I would go back on the night, say, and have a look through those lecture notes change things if it was it was if it wasn't neat enough explain things add comments here and there just so that I kind of had the mindset of if I'm going to look at this in six months time when it comes to my exams or you know two months time whenever my exams were am I going to look at this and understand what's going on and it's very easy at the time thinking yeah I've just learned this I remember what the lecturer said but you might then forget what they said in you know two months time so it's important to add comments that lecturers might have said um, for me some of my lectures were recorded so I would go re-watch the recording add things in that I'd missed during the lecture and it's just that revision it's kind of like an active recall of what you've learned in that day it helps a lot though I remember watching a video that said that if you do this you are like there's a percentage more likely to remember it later on so it was something that I found really helpful and just meant that when it came to revise things were a lot easier <laughs> so yeah I'd highly recommend doing that but don't worry if you can't a maths degree gets quite intense I think something that I found quite helpful really was the example sheets also offer you the opportunity to do that and to review your material but during my undergrad it was kind of I didn't have the time to review the, the material but what I would do is I would review it when I had to do my example sheets so I'd change things, you know, rewatch the lectures and make sure I understood everything whilst doing the example sheets. So as long as you are reviewing that material and making sure you've got neat notes, I think that's very, very important. Now, making notes, it's a difficult one to talk about on, on here and explain, you know, this is what I did and this is what helped me. It's very important to remember that people take notes very differently. For me, I would only use colour when I thought it was appropriate. Other people love to use colour, it's how they learn. So it's important to remember to listen to this video and adopt some of the techniques that I've met, mentioned that I found really helped, but don't change your overall writing style because it, if it's worked for you already, then it's it's a good thing to do and it's, it's going to work anyway. So if it's already worked for you, then keep doing what you're doing. Um, just hopefully you can adopt some of the things that I mentioned in this video. Now, another thing in terms of adding comments from the lectures, I would also make sure you write enough space when it comes to the lectures or even reviewing it afterwards because the amount of times during my revision period that I just wanted to add little things, you know, that I, I'd learned from doing a past paper or an example sheet. So make sure you have enough space between between your writing. I found that really, really helped. And also it means that you kind of have a nice separation between the maths. It's not all just like clunked, clunked together. And for me then when it came to active recall, I could, I could see it in my head. It was helpful because it was more clear. Another thing that I found quite helpful was if I say, say it came to review my lecture note material and there was a particular area that I didn't understand what the lecturer had done, I would then go find a resource that helped me with it to understand it and then I'd put that resource in my lecture notes. It just meant that then when it came to revision, I, I remember there was like this particular area and I was like, I have no idea what the lecture note, what the lecturer did here and I'd forgotten it. But then when I went to the resource that I'd put in the margins, I remembered it and I saw it and I revised that as material. So if it is that kind of, if you have to use a resource to help you with something in your lecture notes, make sure you make a note of it because you'll thank yourself later when it comes to revising. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of the main piece of advice. I think in terms of a general overview for or how I make notes during lectures. The most important things for me are to just make sure that it's it's clear, it's not too crammed in, you know, you can read all of the equations neatly, you know what it says, it's not too messy. Just making sure you have nice lecture notes that if you were to review them when it comes to revising, you know exactly what's going on at every point in those lecture notes. And that's something you should be aiming towards. It's very easy in the middle of a lecture to just think, oh, like, this isn't going to matter, but trust me, you will thank yourself when it comes to revising because you have such nice, neat lecture notes. The other thing that I think is very important is reviewing the material, is the active recall of, okay, I've had this lecture, I'm going to go back over it, I'm going to fill in the points that I did not understand, and just making sure that you understand everything in that lecture before you go to the next one. Now that's sometimes easier said than done. There have been times where I've been like, oh my gosh, this is going to take maybe, you know, say I had a lecture the next day, I would then make it my aim to get it done at some point, it, say it was the week, by the end of the week, I'd make sure I understood it, um, use resources. I think maths degrees can be very intense and a lot of the time you feel like you're chasing your tail because you have example sheets, example sheets, lectures, lectures. There's a lot of content to learn, it can be quite stressful, but 
I think the most important thing is, yeah, reviewing the material when you get the chance. And when it comes to doing the example sheets as well, that also gives you a chance to review the material. But like I said, don't worry if you don't. You do have a long time to revise as well. Uh, and a lot of the time, if you don't understand something, you know, early on in the lecture course, usually by the end, it seems it's very trivial to you. So don't worry too much about it uh, if you don't get it straight away, because there's a, there's a lot of time between learning it and your exams to like refine your knowledge on that area. Now, point number three that I'm going to make is going to be on example sheets. Now, you will know if you are a math student that we get a lot of these. Uh, and if you aren't a math student and you're going on to university, you get a lot of example sheets. And the reason for that is because maths is a very applied area. Uh, it's not a case of, OK, I'm going to learn this and we have to memorise it. And that's what we're tested on in the exam. It's very much, a, OK, you learn this area, then you have to apply it to a specific problem. And I've really enjoyed this part of my first year. We got given a lot of example sheets. And I think the main idea behind that was to just drill into us how to apply the knowledge that we've learned, because then by final year we had example sheets, but we didn't we didn't have quite as many. They didn't really, I don't think they actually counted towards our grade in final year. So first year was nice. I mean, all the years were nice. I love my maths degree, but first year was nice because we had a lot of example sheets, which meant you practiced a lot of what you'd learn. So I want to mention example sheets because a massive amount of learning that you do and note taking is kind of refined through example sheets. It's very important to remember that, like I said, maths is not just learning it, remembering it, and then that's it. It's learning, remembering, then applying. And something I found really helpful was, let's say I had you know, recovered the lecture note for that week. We then got given an example sheet. When it came to that example sheet, I would then use my lecture notes to answer the questions that I have. And that is a second chance, like I just mentioned, to refine the material that you've learned in lectures. For me, it was a chance to really solidify what I'd learned in my lectures through an example sheet. I'm going to make a separate video on how I you know, the, the approaches that I took for example sheets, because I don't want to make this video too long. So if you're interested in that, then subscribe, because I'll be doing a whole video on, uh, you know, how I approach example sheets. Let's say I, you know, I submitted my example sheet and then we got the solutions. What I would do is I would go to the point in my lecture notes where that example was used and I would input it in there so that when it came to like revising the material that I had, I would clearly see here are the lecture notes and then this is the type of example that I could expect from this type of material. And for me, that was really helpful because then it's very easy as a math student to just think, oh, here are the lecture notes. I know them inside and out. That's fine. Let's say you do. But there's a, there's a big difference between knowing lecture notes inside and out and being able to apply them to a problem. So instead of lecture notes, example sheets, it was kind of like it, it kind of integrated the two together so that I had a well-rounded knowledge of the kind of memory side and the application side as well. Like I said, you don't have to do that, but I found that really, really helpful. I also found when doing example sheets, I, I did quite a bit of Googling around the area because a lot of the time you extend what you've learned in that chapter, let's say, uh, to the example sheet. And that's where when you have the gaps in your in your notes, you can then fill in little points and say, oh, well, we could add this in here. This is what happens when we change this. Um, and again, that, that really helped as well, because if I had if I had clear and coherent lecture notes, it meant that I could then just pop things in where, where and when I needed, which then helped again with my revision. So those are the techniques that I adopted as a math student at university. They helped me a lot and there were things that I... I had to, I had to, you know, it took me a long time to learn the best way uh, of remembering maths and applying maths and doing all these things. But generally, that's how I took notes at university. It's hard to say specifically how how I wrote the maths I learned in, in the lecture notes because it's kind of just you just write it, um, you just format it as long as it's written neatly uh, and that any gaps that you may have in your knowledge are filled in, then that was the most important thing for me. If you are interested in kind of seeing some lecture notes, if you are someone that isn't a university student and you're interested in seeing what lecture notes are like at, at university, then feel free to comment down below and I will make a video going through the lecture notes that I have. Those that I'm allowed to go through, that is, because <laughs> some universities don't allow you to. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's just been a bit of an overview of what I, you know, how I took notes as a math student. Hopefully it's been helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.